I hardly ever think about my Mac Mini, but it serves a vital role in my house. It's our home theater mixer, Plex server, scanner server, photos backup, and the cloud backup server for our NAS. Almost every port on the back is in use, and it runs 24-7 reliably in total silence. Losing it would be so disruptive to our family, I didn't even want to disconnect it to shoot footage of it for this video. And until last week, I thought it would be the last Mac Mini that Apple ever made. And when I heard there was going to be an update, I was afraid. I was afraid they prioritized making it as small as possible, which would mean removing all those useful ports and giving it a really slow processor. Fortunately, that's not what they did at all. The 2014 update made a lot of things much worse without making anything much better. The 2018 Mac Mini makes almost nothing worse and almost everything better. It's part of a clear turnaround in the way the company views the Mac for the better. Quite simply, the 2018 Mac Mini is awesome. It's the perfect Mac Mini update to bring this useful little computer into the modern age. First, look at all these ports, these glorious ports. We have four modern USB-C ports with Thunderbolt 3, two USB-A ports for practicality, Ethernet, HDMI, and a headphone jack. We did lose the SD card reader, audio input, and optical audio, but I'd say we still did pretty well overall. The whole point of the Mac Mini is to be as versatile as possible to address lots of diverse needs, and this achieves that. This is also the first Mac desktop, except the iMac, that lets you plug in a 5K display at full quality without hacks or dual cables or anything like that. We finally have 5K Retina Mac options beyond the iMac. You can even upgrade the RAM again, although I did try to access the RAM slots and was foiled by the security screws, so you'll need to get a toolkit from iFixit if you want to actually do that yourself. And it's fast, really fast. I never expected a Mac Mini to be this fast. And I'll tell you how fast in a minute, but first we have to address the one significant drawback. This is not cheap. But it's mostly because it's not a low-end product anymore. It starts out at 800 bucks for a four core i3, eight gigs of RAM and a 128 gig SSD. And that's okay for most people's needs if you're not storing files on it or if you're using external storage. The model Apple lent me for review is the six core i7 processor, the fastest one offered with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. If I were using it as a desktop, I'd go for configuration more like this, but this is 2,500 bucks. It's a decent value compared to other high-end Macs, but it's still a lot of money. Fortunately, you get a lot for it, and this can truly be a pro desktop with a few exceptions. So any kind of mixed workflow that uses CPU power with SSD traffic will do very well, because the new T2 chip straight out of the, the iMac Pro and the 2018 MacBook Pro is a ridiculously fast SSD controller, and it's a huge step forward for security. If I were buying a computer today, I would only consider models with the T2. So with the T2 and the high-end CPU in my tests, it builds overcast much faster than my high-end 13-inch MacBook Pro, and almost as quickly as my 10-core iMac Pro. If you're looking for an Xcode development machine, this is a great option. A lot of people also use Mac Minis as media servers or Plex servers, so I ran an H.265 transcoding test. The Mac Mini was twice as fast as a 13-inch MacBook Pro, and not even too far from the iMac Pro, which has twice as many CPU cores. It does great on Geekbench, too. The new Mac Mini with the i7 scored better on single-core performance than any other Mac today at about 5,900, and its multi-core score of nearly 25,000 beats every Mac to date except the iMac Pro and the old 12-core Mac Pro. The only spec that lets it down is the Intel GPU. It's fast enough for common tasks, but if your workload benefits from a strong GPU, you're better off going for an iMac or a 15-inch MacBook Pro. This is mostly Intel's fault, but it is Apple's problem. If you don't need a strong GPU, and honestly, most Mac Mini use cases don't, this is a solid pick for a general purpose Mac, even at the base level $800 configuration. Spec it up, and it's more like a mini Mac Pro. You can even get 10 gig ethernet if you're using this in high-end network roles, which is a clear signal from Apple of the Mini's various uses in server clusters and data centers. Power consumption and fan noise are mostly what you'd expect. It uses about 15 watts at idle, which is higher than the 5 to 10 watts that my 2014 Mac Mini uses, although this is also a higher spec machine than that. With the high power i7 in this one, heavy workloads hover around 50 watts, and the fan really does spin up noticeably. I measured from one inch above the middle. I measured the maximum fan speed at about 40 decibels, but that's actually near the bottom of what my meter can reliably measure. By comparison, my 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro with a top-end i7 was about 7 decibels louder, which is a pretty noticeable difference in real-world use. The MacBook Pro's noise was also a bit more harsh than the Mac Mini's.
Fortunately, when the Mac Mini with the i7 isn't heavily loaded, it's silent. I can't even tell that it's on. And when I disabled Turbo Boost to simulate the i3 base model, I couldn't get the fans to spin up to an audible level no matter how hard the CPU was working. So I actually recommend sticking with the i3 if silence is important to you and you don't need extreme performance. So overall, this is a great update to a Mac that we thought would never be updated again. And with Apple's track record on the Mac Mini, it may never be updated after this. This is either the first in a series of regular updates where Apple proves to us they care about the Mac Mini again, or this is the last Mac Mini that will ever exist and we'll all be hoarding them in a few years. We can't know yet, but today, this is a great Mac Mini update, a wonderful all-arounder for lots of potential and just a fantastic computer. Anyway, thanks for watching.